One wrestler who was recently released, uh, Cody Rhodes, much like yourself, comes from a very prestigious wrestling family. He was very vocal about how frustrated he was with the creative and writing process. What are your thoughts about Cody Rhodes as a wrestler, and do you agree with his sentiments? I totally agree. I think Cody Rhodes, if you watch wrestling, and like I do, and you watch for the wrestling, there's so much talking. There's some twit back there with a pencil behind his ear writing down all these things for wrestlers to say. It all starts to sound the same. Like when I watch interviews today, it's just such a yawn. As soon as they, I switch channels, as soon as I hear somebody going into a big monologue, they all sound the same. It was a difference back in my time when we all had to make up our own verbiage. And so when you watch those interviews, you know, there's a certain part of you comes out. And that's what makes those characters so great was it's from your own heart. And sometimes if you fail in that category, that's your, you own it. But in wrestling today, somebody writes down a bunch of lousy words for you to say that comes across flat. It's not your fault. It might be it was the guy that wrote it down. Because I've seen today, even in my own case, with the bits and pieces I've done on wrestling, where they give me five pages of script to go out and uh, interrupt somebody and say this or that. It might even be really small and pretty, uh, you know, limited sort of dialogue, but it's like, it's hard to do. I can't, and then especially when they give it to you at three o'clock and then uh, you start to memorize it and have it sort of memorized by five o'clock and then they come up to you at six and say that here it's all changed. Here's this is what you got to remember now. Take out this part and they've added this part. And it's really tough. I, I don't know how guys like John Cena, I've seen John Cena memorizing pages and pages of script, but I think that Cody Rhodes, if you watch wrestling like I do as a wrestling fan, He's, to me, uh, one of those wrestlers that I would put in the category of excellence of execution. Every move he does is safe and perfectly executed. There's a lot of wrestlers today, A, their execution is lousy and, and they're not safe. You watch Seth Rollins, who they've pushed like this huge mega, mega push. You know, I watched him a few months ago and you can watch it back on YouTube, but he needs John Cena in the face just knees him in the face so hard and so recklessly and so dangerously, he could easily kill somebody with a knee like that in the face. He moved his knee, his nose from this side of his head to the, to the side of his ear. That's a testimony to John Cena. A, he finished the match and B, that he didn't get a shotgun and shoot Seth Rollins when he came through the curtain. I just know in my day, you couldn't make those kind of, uh, you know, Goldberg kicked me and they had ended my career in a second stroke and so many things that happened all because somebody didn't know what he was doing and then he was reckless. And then you get someone like Seth Rollins who, who's pushed right to the top and is a big star in the company and uh, John Cena. What, what if he'd killed John Cena in the ring right there with that knee? There's just no room for those kind of errors. And I've seen, in my opinion, really skilled, talented wrestlers like Wade Barrett is another one. I consider Drew McIntyre another one really skilled wrestlers, Cody Rhodes is now another one, that have been passed over and missed the train. And the question like, was it because they weren't good enough or wasn't their, their work wasn't good enough? Or what, I don't know what was wrong with any of those. those. To me, those were wrestlers that I tuned in to watch. Being a wrestling fan, I enjoyed watching them because they were really good. And you have these writers in the back that have make these decisions and come up with these ideas. We're going to make them stardust or we're going to do this. And a lot of the writers, I think, they're wrestling fans, but they don't understand wrestling. And the only way they could ever understand wrestling is to actually be a wrestler. And that's not going to happen. So now when it comes to guys who've missed the train with WWE, your Wade Barrett's and your Brodus Clay's and whatnot, Seth Rollins not only seems to be on that train, he's on a rocket to the top for years and years to come. He's already entrenched. Do you think it's a mistake? for WWE to make Seth Rollins a top star? Um, no, I, I just question a lot of his, his abilities in the sense that um, the best wrestlers don't hurt anyone for real. You're a professional, you have to be, and when you give somebody, he gives you your body. Like my, my greatest claim to fame in wrestling has always been, you know, the best there is, best there was, best there will be. But I can actually back that up in a lot of ways by saying, I wrestled 23 straight years all over the world. My greatest boast is that I never injured one single wrestler in my career. Ever got injured, ever came back to the dressing room and going, oh, like Bret Hart did that wrong, did that move wrong, and now my neck's messed up, or like, 
you know, I broke somebody's arm or, you know, I twisted his knee out and, you know, he's, you know, or I moved when I wasn't supposed to or whatever. You know, the truth is I was a consummate professional and the safety of my opponent was uh, critical to me. And it was Seth Rollins. I, you know, I saw him hurt uh, Cena and uh, it wasn't even a week, 10 days later that he... Um, Rough, you know, he was so rough or hard on Sting. It was, you know, he did things to a guy that uh, kind of ended his career a lot faster. You know, it was a little bit of a disrespect to the fact that this guy, you need to take care of him in the ring. The reason there's so many injuries today is because um, of the style and the pace that they're setting. Uh, that's what works. That's the style today is just 100 miles an hour full blast. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not for that style. I, I, like, um, I like you to take your time and and to know what you're doing and uh, be comfortable with what you're going to do next rather than rushing into the next move. And there's so many uh, high power type of power bomb type moves that where you're driving somebody's back or spine into the mat from a sunset flip off the top turnbuckle. You know, you see Kevin Owens, some of these guys just doing breathtaking uh, moves on each other. And then they just get right back up and do another move. And it's like someone's going to get killed or hurt for real someday with that kind of mentality or the philosophy of nobody selling anything all the time. There's things that happen in wrestling, but you're starting to see things in wrestling where it's spinal injuries, it's neck injuries, it's concussion injuries, and that's wrong. Someone, again, you're dealing with people like Stephanie McMahon maybe, even Shane McMahon or some of these people that don't understand sports injuries because they never played sports. They don't understand that uh, you know, when you do these kind of things, you can kill somebody and it may look great, but you know, you really, you know, you need to think twice about what you're doing. I mean, my career was ended by a guy named Bill Goldberg who literally kicked me in the back of the head, kicked me like a, like a horse would kick somebody in a barn. Absolute, total reckless, no, no control over his force or the blow. Bill, and I know, I remember Kurt Henning talking to me you know, years ago saying, like, I asked him what it was like working with Bill, and he was like, it's like it looks on TV. It, it's painful stuff. It's like he's taking years off my life every night, every time I work with him. And I remember Bill coming back to the dress room and all the, you know, the guys that were the television guys for WWE, the, the foremans, guys like Terry Taylor and stuff like that, are giving him a pat on the back and telling him what a great job. That looks great. And I'd see the wrestler that he worked with coming back and nobody even cares, like, it's not important. He's just a crash test dummy for Bill Goldberg to destroy out there every night. And Bill destroyed a lot of wrestlers as he went through that phase where he had, I don't know how many wins in a row. But all these wrestlers gave their bodies up for him and he was quite hard on everybody physically, you know, with absolutely no concern about injuries. And then he started working with the big boys, like the main events, the guys that have million dollar contracts, guys like myself, uh, Kurt Henning, uh, you know, just, and it was that same mentality. You didn't seem to understand, like, you, there's a line here. Like, it's not really real that you can actually kick somebody as hard as you can in the head. A, you could kill him. B, you could end his career. And guys like Bill never, were never aware of it. I mean, I, I really don't blame Bill today, but I blame the people that were around him that were always telling him, good job, lay it in, you gotta do this, you gotta you know, keep up the good work. And he never knew the difference between safe wrestling and not safe wrestling.